Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Kelly Troutman. I am a certified hand therapist. In today's video, I want to go through a home exercise program that I typically give for people with Decrovanes, tenosynovitis. So just trying to give you a few exercises that you can get started with, a few stretches, um, things that you might want to consider if you or somebody that you know has Decrovanes, tenosynovitis. This video is also great for any therapists out there that want to give their patients a home program, um, but maybe people need a little bit more reminders or a video. Um, we're all different learners, so sometimes having a paper handout is not helpful or people lose the paper. Um, I also always recommend that patients take a video or photo on their phone when you um, do the initial evaluation. Have them just take a video of their exercises. That way they can remember them and there will be no excuses. So let's get into it. Thank you guys for watching. Um, and I hope you that, uh, blah, blah. I hope that you enjoy this video. So first things first, I think that the essential first step in understanding um, and making your pain better is actually knowing about what is happening in your body, understanding the diagnosis that you have been given, um, that way you'll understand the symptoms and it will make more sense why you're doing the things that you're doing. So essentially, Dacrovane's tenosynovitis is truly a space issue. It is an impingement issue. Um, we have two tendons along the thumb and the wrist and I've gone, uh, I've gone ahead and drawn them onto my arm in Sharpie. You can see on the side of the thumb here, we've got in green, the EPL or the, uh, sorry, the EPB, um, which is the extensor pollicis brevis muscle. That is this little guy in green. Um, and as this tendon comes down along that direction, the muscle belly actually comes back in this direction. It helps to extend the thumb. The pink tendon that you'll see right next to it, super, super close space is the APL or the abductor pollicis longus muscle. So that guy, again, runs right next to the EPB. Um, and as those two tendons are running through the wrist, they go through a little um, sheath or kind of a tunnel essentially um, that is part of the extensor retinaculum. So they run through this little tunnel that just holds them nice and tight down to the bone here. It's usually right in the area of this little ulnar styloid bone that kind of sticks out in the wrist. Um, and as those tendons are running together in that sheath, um, there, there's some friction going on in that area. If we're doing a lot of repetitive movements, we're lifting things, picking things up, doing a lot of, um, you know, texting or whatever, thumb swiping, lifting pots and pans, carrying trays, um, a lot of different repetitive movements that we do throughout the day. There becomes a thickening um, of the synovial lining of the tendons. There becomes a thickening of that extensor retinaculum. So there's no more space. And so every time that those tendons are kind of rolling through or gliding, excursion through the tunnel, they are impinging. And so there's this element of pain. And if you have Decker veins, then you know that doing this maneuver where you're tucking your thumb down and then bending the wrist down sideways is excruciating. People will feel it right here in the wrist. They have a hard time um, using the mouse or their computer, a lot of different things can go wrong. But essentially it is a space issue. There is um, a tendinopathy, tendon damage that is going on, a thickening of the tunnel, and so things are very painful. Like many diagnoses, I think the most difficult, but the uh, one of the most important parts of treating the pain and getting these symptoms to go down, getting this injury to heal, or essentially this painful experience to heal, um, is activity modification. That is absolutely the hardest thing to do because we are creatures of habit. We've spent our whole lives doing things the way that we do them. Um, for example, if you go grocery shopping, you're coming into your house, I am so guilty of this. I do not want to take two trips, so I will load up both arms. I will carry everything I possibly can. I've got my water bottle hooked on my finger. Um, lots of crazy things happening. Um, and in reality, it would take 10, 
more seconds to go take a second trip, like 10 more steps. How hard is that? But it's super hard to retrain our motor habits, um, which is I think one of the hardest things to do. With Decrovane's tenosynovitis, I often recommend patients to pretend that their thumb is taped to the other fingers and that they can only use their fingers to lift things. I think we get into the habit of picking things up um, with this lateral grip, right? So we tend to like hold something like this and lift and that is gonna cause so much pain and so much tension in that area. So you need to retrain yourself to kind of flip the hands underneath, lift things from underneath um, rather than trying to grip and pull. Um, pots and pans, another thing that we commonly lift in that direction. Um, you know, most pots and pans only have one uh, handle, but if you get an oven mitt on your other hand, that way you can use both to lift the pot or the pan. Um, so it's a lot of just trying to modify what you're doing. It's very common with new mothers or new fathers um, because the way that we lift the baby too, right? You've got kind of that open grip and you're lifting, scooping under their arms. Um, a lot of pressure after being pregnant or being in a hormonal phase, it's very likely for women um, to have hormonal changes that lead to more inflammation and can um, cause like a, uh, they call it mommy wrist basically, um, but it, it happens in new dads too. So trying to figure out a different way to hold the baby where you're kind of able to scoop underneath their bottom. Um, when you're feeding, a lot of people when they're breastfeeding, um, the wrist curves around. So if you can try to set up your pillows around you to help you not get that hyperflexion of the wrist. Um, the movements that are gonna tend to be very aggravating for people with Dr. Vane's um, weight bearing um, putting pressure into a hyperextended wrist, so doing things like push-ups, getting out of a chair, um, getting off the bed, <laughs> again with that palm down and an extended wrist. They're going to have trouble um, with a hyperflexed wrist as well, so having to hold things um, or scoop something up and hold with a flexed wrist, trying to keep that wrist really neutral to help you out. Um, repetitive thumb movements, lifting pots and pans, um, obviously the combination of the thumb and the wrist turning that way to lift something, a lot of strain. Um, doing repetitive thumb movements like texting, swiping, um, all that kind of stuff is going to be very aggravating. Um, opening bottles like water bottles or um, baby bottles, jars, that kind of thing, it's just causing that twisting movement with the wrist and the thumb. So trying to find ways that you can use tools to help you with that. Use um, a tool to help you open the jar of the baby food or the you know pickle jar or whatever you're doing. Um, use uh, like shelf liner those or drawer liners where they're a little bit sticky, tacky. It'll help you get a little bit better grip and that way you can kind of use more like your fingers or you can kind of use your palm to turn it and not have to use the thumb as much. Um, having people help you is also extremely, extremely helpful. So activity modification is crucial and it is such a hard part of this. Um, if you are somebody who works on a computer, when you're uh, mousing, you know, make sure that you're not twerking your wrist like that. Um, try and move from the whole shoulder rather than doing these finite little ulnar deviated movements throughout your day. All those little things are gonna add up and over time that's gonna help so, so much. The stretches that I typically start patients that have Decrovane's with um, is just trying to do forearm stretches in addition to thinking about activity modification principles. So forearm stretches are the type of stretching that everyone has done before, but we just don't do them enough throughout our day. Um, it's holding the arm out straight in front of you and using the other hand to push down. So I see people do it wrong a lot of times, so I'm gonna show you the wrong way to do it and then the right way to do it. So the wrong way to do it, holding the arm out, actively bending down and then using your other hand, you're not getting as good of a stretch because you're actively engaging those muscles when you did that movement. So what you wanna do is hold it out passively bend it down. So keep the affected side relaxed and use the other hand to complete the stretch. Now, a lot of times these stretches are very aggravating, especially if you are in an acute 
phase of decker veins or it's very early on it's very painful so try and modify this stretch don't hold your arm all the way out straight maybe hold it by your side with a flexed elbow that way you're not going to be in as much pain and as much pressure and then you can kind of take that arm and just gently bend it down just to the point where you feel a stretch but not pain and then again you'll go the opposite direction pulling the wrist back just gently as far as you can to feel a comfortable stretch if you can do those stretches every couple hours holding for about five to ten seconds it's going to help you a lot it breaks up the activities that you're doing we need to give our bodies a break a lot of times we are um, working at a computer for eight to ten hours a day and we don't take very many breaks especially now that people are working from home um, for covid when you're a mom or a dad and you have a little one running around you don't get to take breaks all the time so every even if you have 30 seconds 30 second break you've gone to the bathroom and you have 30 seconds while you're washing your hands do a little bit of a stretch while you do that it will help you so so much if you can get that in every couple hours as those stretches get easier i like to progress to the, the kind of modified finkelstein stretching program so the finkelstein movement is this real painful one where you tuck the thumb and ulnarly deviate the wrist down you don't want to do that with pain so when you're doing the modified stretching program you want to stop before you feel pain the first position is going to look like this you're going to have your arm at your side you're going to tuck the thumb in and that's it 10 times you can start with just tucking the, the nail of the thumb and then as that gets easier you can try to tuck the next joint in 10 times and then the next joint in only with the thumb right my wrist is totally neutral it's not moving at all okay that's phase one phase two that you can move on to is doing that with an extended arm so you're gonna bring your arm out straight you're gonna tuck that thumb. You practice that 10 times. When you can do that without pain, then you can kind of start doing the ulnar deviation movement. So then you'll bring your back, yourself back in. <laughs> I'm doing like gymnastics here. Back into your side, elbow at 90 degrees, tuck the thumb, gentle wrist movement. Again, if you're feeling more than one or two out of 10 pain with that, you've gone too far, ease it back. You're gonna kind of find that point of pain and don't go far enough to hit it. Does that make sense? And you'll repeat that 10 times, okay? So as you progress these stretches, you're helping to lengthen back out these tendons that have gotten so, so tight. Everything wants to pull in that direction. Um, and sometimes certainly there's some carpal issues going on as well. And um, for those kind of issues, it will help to have a therapist kind of correct that. They can do some joint mobilizations. But if you can start doing some stretching on your own, it will help you so, so much. The last thing that we'll talk about in this HUP video or this home exercise program for Decker Veins is the use of ice and heat. Both of these things can be helpful. It does depend on what stage of the injury you are in. If this is a brand new injury, you've had symptoms for a month or less, um, it's really sore, achy, uh, it feels really swollen or full, anything like that, you wanna use ice because it is gonna help calm down whatever inflamed tissue is in there that's gotten irritated and it will help prevent um, things from getting worse. Um, it will help kind of manage your symptoms and your pain. It will help things from getting worse or getting out of control. If you've had this injury for a longer period of time, ice can still help you, but in a different way. Um, at that point, a lot of times we've gotten very tight, stiff. The tissues are just adhered. They're very fibrous and stiff. Um, we need to get the tendons stretched back out. So it's actually really good if you can use heat um, some form of warmth to help warm your body up before you do stretching or massage or exercises um, having a little bit of heat in that area is going to help you lengthen those tendons a little bit easier and it won't feel as painful after your work day or after you've done a lot of heavy activity 
you've been lifting the baby, whatever you're doing, if you're feeling sore, swollen, it's the end of your day, um, you've done a lot of activity, put an ice pack on, especially before you go to sleep. It can help so much to calm down all of the irritation that you've done to the wrist throughout your day. It will help your pain. It will help manage any inflammation that can kind of sink in um, after doing a lot of work. It's gonna feel really, really good. Um, so I think ice and heat can absolutely be very helpful if not only for just temporary pain management or temporary pain relief, um, but it can also help you progress as well throughout this program. So obviously there is so much more to discuss, but I just wanted to give, you know, kind of a quick little rambling video about what a home exercise program for Decrovane's tenosynovitis might look like. Obviously, there are tons of ways that we would progress as symptoms get better, um, and I will make maybe a part two for this video with some different suggestions that I have. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it was helpful. If you do have questions, please comment them below. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss any more hand therapy videos. Thank you guys so much for watching.